prescription drugs were found. Thompson says Lawrence told their client the following. I have that it is illegal to have certain prescriptions with other prescriptions in a bottle. That is incorrect. Thompson says the victim agreed to show lawful proof of her prescription medication. But Lawrence had this response. We'll let the courts figure it out. We'll let the judge figure it out to be exact. Client was then arrested and according to Thompson, she was taken to what's called the Brave Cave, a place used for interrogations by police. Thompson says his client was stripped and given a body cavity search. It is a sexual assault and that has been custom, that has been informal policy and that has been written policy of the Baton Rouge Police Department for years. It's time for that to end. Spoke with BRPD Chief Murphy Paul and Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom, who says they Okay, are- so the system down here is black. Everybody in the system is black. Time for that to end. Spoke with BRPD Chief Murphy Paul and Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom, who says they are taking these allegations seriously. We're going to continue that type of accountability. I get it. I understand people upset. I understand that uh, there's a lot of concern out there. I've worked tirelessly uh, to close the gap between our citizens and the police Mayor department President. to build really? and elevate a level of trust that, That's quite good. frankly, uh, was not there uh, in the past. To Don Britton, NBC Local 33 News. Black woman president. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, I'm going to be uh, mayor president. All right, man. Uh, I looked up see. mayor president. I don't see anything about it. Wait. We want to bring in News Nation contributor Tracy Walder. She's also former CIA officer and FBI special agent. Tracy, thanks so much for staying with us. Thank you for having me, Natasha. At either the CIA or FBI, have you ever seen anything like this? Absolutely not. Look, I, I've been to black sites. Many of them um, at CIA has been to great. So that's great, right? She's never seen anything like this. That's the story. That's the story right there. Casey, thanks so much for staying with us. Thank you for having me, Natasha. At either the CIA or FBI, have you ever seen anything like this? Absolutely not. Look, I, I've been to black sites, many of them um, at CIA, spent a great deal of time there, um, spoke with detainees there. But I can say with 100% certainty, I, I've never seen anything like this, particularly what involves American citizens who are protected by the Eighth Amendment, which is cruel and unusual torture. What are black sites and how common are they? Black sites really are entities that are not formally recognized by the government, but are usually places where government entities or people working on behalf of the government take people there to do things that are illicit. Okay. Um, are, are black sites ever, ever sanctioned or are they always operating uh, under these sorts of circumstances? I can't speak, um, unfortunately, about black sites as a whole. Um, I'm limited on what I can say because of my time at the CIA. Um, some of that's still classified. But here in the United States, we are not allowed to have them. Americans and American citizens and folks living here legally are all protected by the Eighth Amendment, which, the, which is their right, which protects them against cruel and unusual punishment, also known as torture. As you're hearing some of these details and stories come down, what details are standing out to you? In what way do they clearly cross a line? if true. Well, uh, just a couple things that I, hasn't really been, been talked about a lot, but uh, aside from the physical pain um, that was endured by some of these individuals, there's two things. I think the first one is now, because of this, we may be looking at a lot of convictions being overturned if, you know, these convictions were obtained as a result of this torture, this illegal torture. Right. Uh, that was going on. Also, this facility was in the middle of, I, I don't want to say a neighborhood, but sort of a business complex where there was a daycare, there were homes, there were other businesses. Any of these people could have gotten free and would have caused a massive security issue. So there are so many issues that I see here. And quite frankly, it makes me angry. Yeah. What can you tell us about the history of corruption in New Orleans? I mean, are you concerned about corruption throughout local uh, Louisiana police departments? <laughs> This is better. So I'm concerned with actually Louisiana as a whole. In 2022, uh, the Justice Department, the Federal Justice Department, 
opened up a criminal investigation against Louisiana State Police um, and their violation of civil rights, racism, and use of, effect of excessive force. So we have that issue there. You also have the fact that 51% of disciplinary cases against officers in Louisiana, the big cities like Shreveport, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans are overturned on technicalities. So they're afforded a lot of protections that police officers who face disciplinary actions are not afforded in other states in the U.S., and that is highly problematic. Yeah. Okay, Tracy Walder, always appreciate your time. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. So, Louisiana's CIA doesn't approve of the treatment of sun people. <laughs> yeah, but there's, like, sun shootings going a mile a minute at every HBCU in Louisiana every fucking week. Oh, officers have been arrested? This evening, East Baton Rouge Metro Councilwoman Denise Amoroso is asking Police Chief Murphy Paul to step aside. This coming after a yelling match about the so-called Brave Cave at last night's council meeting. And today, three Baton Rouge police officers were arrested amid investigations into misconduct in connection to the Brave Cave. NBC Local 33's Sydney Simone is live outside that facility with more on this tonight. Sydney. Good evening, Renee, Jacob. Well, some members of the Baton Rouge Police Department Street Crimes Unit are accused of using a local warehouse, which in fact, I'm gonna step out of the way so you can get a good look at the area. This building is a couple buildings over from the BRPD headquarters on Plank Road. It's called the Brave Cave and officers used it to beat people and conduct inappropriate strip searches during interrogation. This Brave Cave is now shut down, but some officers are now in custody. Now, Elgene McNeely with the Baton Rouge Police Department says three BRPD officers, Deputy Chief Troy Lawrence Sr., Corporal Todd Thomas, and Sergeant Jesse Barcelona were arrested earlier today. Mm, Gladys in a, in a goddamn old burrito. Mm. And placed on administrative leave. McNeely says a fourth officer has a warrant out but hasn't been arrested yet. Now, during an intense council meeting Wednesday night, several board members, community activists, and city leaders voiced their concerns, including BRPD Chief Murphy Paul, who didn't hold back. Take a listen to what he had to say. 14 police officers were terminated. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight resigned under investigation. And then there's appeals. And you know what you do? You strip my funding. Yeah. Right. Are you going to pay the attorney all the money that I already owe them for the bad cops that the civil service board, where we're going to be here tomorrow, and none of y'all going to be here. And y'all sitting here trying to deal off these people's emotions and some of y'all the problem. Jen Rocker, you sit there defund defund the police department's budget from a legal standpoint and then come here because I don't have legal representation and I got to play lawyer to fight these bad actors. Let's talk facts. Mm. Mm. District 12 Councilwoman Jen Raka alleges the city is overpaying an attorney hired by Chief Murphy Paul, which is why funding wasn't approved. Here's what she had to say. And is it because you're looking at me and my skin's white? Yeah. Does my truth not resonate because of the color of my skin? Go ahead, white girl. Damn. With the script on the face. Well, it was because I'm white, taste. huh? Man, yeah, give a taste of their own medicine, man. And is it because you're looking so at me and my skin's it. white? Yeah. Does my truth not resonate because of the color of my skin? So I was accused of not approving the police chief's funding for his lawyers. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, he's hired Brazil Saxe. He has a personal lawyer from the parish attorney's office called D. Lee Morris, and he has the whole host of attorneys from the parish attorney's office. We didn't approve funding from Brazil Saxe because we found out they were overbilling the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. District 12 Councilwoman Jen Raka alleges the department was made aware of the Brave Cave months in advance prior to the first report 
on August 28th, and Troy Lawrence Jr. reportedly had several complaints prior to the Brave Cape incident, and we did reach out to RACA's team, the Baton Rouge Union of Police, and the Civil Service Board for comments um, on this meeting last night, but we have yet to hear back anything. But BRPD will host a press conference tomorrow morning to address details in this ongoing investigation into the Brave Cave. Reporting here in Baton Rouge, Sydney Simone, NBC Local 33 News. All right, Sydney, thank you for that live report for us tonight. Mm. You tell him, son, man. Some man said, fuck that shit. And then the glider came back like, man, what? Fuck you. Yeah, man. You have to move everything from the flag mm. site to the sunspot. Yeah, 